What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys how I record my YouTube videos in Linux. So I figured I'd do this video because I notice a lot of guys out there, they want to store YouTube channels and they may or may not have some of the applications that are needed to actually do it because on when the Windows side, you know, it costs money. Um, a lot of the actual software that you can professionally do YouTube videos or uh, graphics design and all that stuff, it costs money. For instance, Adobe products. Um, so I wanted to kind of do this video just to show people that you can actually do YouTube videos, produce YouTube videos um, in a very professional way uh, on the Linux platform. There are a bunch of tools out there uh, that actually can be compar comparable to the software that you have to pay for on Linux. So I wanted to go through and do that now so also let me state that a lot of this software it can be used on windows and mac os as well uh it's cross-platform so uh, most of the software i will show it will work on different uh os's so don't worry about it if you not switch to linux yet i just want to show you all how i do it on linux so so the first application i want to show you guys is um it's cross-platform but it's called obs and this is how i actually record all my videos uh where i'm recording my desktop uh recording my screen you know uh recording different applications uh changing up the backgrounds and all that stuff i use this this program to actually accomplish that. Now there are other programs out there that actually do the same thing, but let me show you guys OBS right fast and I recommend it because I think it's like pretty much the best. So uh, let me go to their website right fast. I don't remember what it is, but this application is in all Linux distributions. Uh, you can download it, well, install it directly from the repository in most instances. Uh, so let me just give me one second. Uh, here we go. And OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. So like I said, it's on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, uh, free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. And I won't get, get too deep in reading it, but... Um, yeah, premier sponsors is Twitch. A lot of people use this uh, for their Twitch uh, streams while they're doing uh, uh, reviewing games or, you know, the gaming channels and all that stuff. Uh, so it's a pretty cool application. So let me actually show you mine. And I'm actually recording on it right now. So I want to show it to you. Uh, so this is basically my scene is set up with my image there uh, i added all my sources in here so like i said i'm not gonna go too deep into how to actually use it uh you can play around with it yourself there's a lot of tutorials out there but i just wanted to go through and show you guys uh a little bit about it but you know you can add images into it uh some people had this stuff scrolling across you know the bottom of the screen uh or like the background uh that moves and stuff so and then i have different different uh scenes depending on what i'm doing like if i don't want to show my face i have another one uh if i want to just show the terminal which i don't have a terminal application open right now but it'll show up in here. I have a box set up for it. Uh, and I just have to, you know, specify the size. And then when I do virtual box, it's pretty much the same thing. I have a box in here uh, that kind of shows virtual box. And right now it's not showing up because I don't have any V boxes open, but it's there. And you just add the input to the source, uh, which is the actual application. You just specified it there. So not going to go too deep into that, like I said, um, but this is a quick overview. And then also you can live stream on this thing. So all you have to do is hit start streaming. You go into the preferences, actually, and add your 
streaming key so it could be uh different different places you're streaming to so you can stream straight to ig or stream straight to facebook uh you just have to get that stream key and load it up in here in the preferences and you'll be good to go so i'm gonna hide this right now so the next application i want to talk about is once i record the videos um I have to do the video editing, of course, right? So the application I use for that is Caden Live. And I have a video on Caden Live. Uh, it's a great application for editing. Uh, I'm gonna open up one of my projects just to show you guys, give you guys a quick overview, you know? And uh, I have a more detailed um, a video on how to use Caden Live, but let's go down and open up one of my projects or whatever. Uh, and the last video I did was on Adam. So I'll just open that project, just show you guys a little bit what I did. So, I mean, it creates, you know, it adds channels to the actual, uh, to the actual video editing software. So you can put video here, audio here. Uh, you can specify, uh, if you want things turned off or if you want certain sections muted, they have a lot of, uh, compositions where you can transition between different different videos that you you uh you have for your video uh and different effects they have audio effects i use my um the audio effects a lot uh when dealing with certain videos i don't have my mic set up correctly so i have to kind of add some gain to it or adjust the audio volume uh so they have all those type of audio corrections in built into the actual application and you just add all your files here and then you can drag and drop them down here you can cut through cut different pieces out you know put it all put it all together however you want to it's it's a very good um uh, video editing software uh i've never used uh what is it after effects or adobe i can't remember what it's called adobe after effects or whichever one it is um that you do video editing on on i think it's adobe premiere that's what it is um i never use it so i can't really compare it 100 percent um but based on what i'm seeing you know this is on that level yeah, as far as i could tell um, cause it has all the features that I know are in, uh, Adobe Premiere as far as, you know, editing videos. So, all right. So on to the next, uh, application, um, what I do once I do my editing, I render it out into a format. So it'll, it'll render it out into MP4 and all that stuff. Well, one thing I like to do is uh compress the videos because a lot of times the the video is in it renders it out in kind of like a raw format where it's it's no compression on it in my opinion so one application that i use to fix some of that or kind of compress the video and make it smaller uh so it's not taking up space once i you know archive it and all that stuff uh i use handbrake so let me just open that up and show you guys that and handbrake is pretty much kind of like a audio compression type software or you can go through and actually uh, you know just put everything together and compress it as one you could put like different chapters into it but i mainly use it for compression like i said so i'll add the rendered video out to handbrake and i'll open it up in here and then i'll uh just run the application, just make sure the dimensions are right and, and put it in the format that you want. I go in and select uh, uh, HQ 1080p 30, which it, my videos really don't need that. Uh, I just do it so people can see the terminal text uh, pretty good. Uh, if you're, you know, watching at a higher um, quality which really doesn't matter for me, for me. And I'm not doing a whole bunch of movements in my video. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, in a higher quality or not, as long as people can actually see the text on the screen or the application. I'm fine with that. But like I said, this is, this is an application I use. You don't have to actually do this. YouTube will take the rendered video uh, without doing this, I just do it. It's just a personal preference for me to kind of compress my rendered videos. Once it's rendered, I have no use for the actual file once I upload it. So 
uh, what I do is I run it through here first and then upload that version, delete the rendered copy. Uh, cause sometimes my videos are like 400 megabytes. And if you got like 60 videos at 400 megabytes a, a piece, then, you know, that takes up a lot of space in your hard drive. So I can get, normally when I run it through here, I get it down to about 150, 150 megabytes, which is very good, you know? And, um, that's just something that I use, um, so check it out if that's if if you think that'll help you with your videos as well. So now one thing I forgot before I render videos, I normally do some uh, audio editing. So I forgot to bring up this application is something that I use all the time. It's called Audacity and I need to do a video on this. I've seen a couple of people do videos on it uh, and they you know, like the software, they, you know, support the software and all that stuff. And they, you know, show how to actually use it. But pretty much this is a that audacity. Uh, and this is allows you to do some editing to your audio. So I normally just add my video files to it. Uh, and then there's ways to actually remove uh, background noise, like noise reduction, um, compression, um, changing the, you know, bass and trouble, trouble le levels. And le like, sometimes I've recorded videos where, uh, the audio was like super low because my mic was turned down and I didn't know it while I was recording, but it still was a pretty decent video. And I wanted to, you know, I want I otherwise I was going to have to re-record the video. And so um, Audacity has saved me in those in those instances where you can go in, uh, put the audio in here or put the video in here and then you can focus in on the audio and extract out all the audio for the video. And you can change the settings of the actual uh, audio for that video and um, by raising different levels. So if you couldn't hear hear me in the video. Uh, because my mic was messed up, then after you run it through this software, you know, it'll raise the bass, you know, to a to a um, a level that people can hear you in the video. So and also it kind of cleans up, you know, I like it because it cleans up really the background noise, because sometimes my laptop, when I'm running like multiple VMs, it'll my fan will spin up, you know what I'm saying? Because it's and it, it'll get kind of loud. I have a a better mic now. But in the past, when I used to use just headphones, it would pick up on that background noise a lot. And so this, like I said, this application, uh, there's videos out on it. I'm going to go down and do that. I might make that my next video. But Audacity is a great tool for cleaning up your audio. audio. Uh, so just wanted to point that out as well. Okay. And so the next thing I do, I just want to show you guys how I create my thumbnails. So... I've done a video on this before. I kind of promote it, uh, but GIMP is a very great uh, application for uh, graphics design. Uh, I've talked about it in the past, you know what I'm saying? It's comparable to Adobe Photoshop. Uh, so this is something that I use. It's free, open source, and all these tools are free that I've shown you guys, and they're open source, and they allow you to do very professional, very good professional work. Uh, I did a you know, a quick Instagram video not that long ago, just showing something that I was working on for a client. Uh, Cause every now and then I do graphics design work, which is, you know, just to make a little extra money. And really it's just to help people that, you know, don't have the money to go to, you know, some of these uh, expensive uh, graphics design places. So they'll come to me and I help them out, give them a good deal. You know what I'm saying? And do what I can in order to help them out. If it's something uh, I can't do, then I obviously send it to people that are way more professional than me as far as graphics design work. Um, but uh, this is a great application for that. And also, let me just, I guess, open up one of the, the last things I was working on. Uh, I'll open up the my last um, thumbnail. So let's go in here and it saves it in XCF format. Uh, that's uh, GIMP's format. But once you, you know, create it, you can 
once you finish the graphics design for it, you can extract it out in all the different formats like JPEG, PNG, uh, it all depending on what you need. So let me open it up right fast. But I mean, it's pretty simple on how to actually use it. If you understand Photoshop, then you can pick this up right away uh, because, you know, you got your different layers and I kind of make my stuff simple. I kind of use a template. So it's pretty simple. I just put my text in there. Uh, my logo always stays in the template, uh, the background, you know, I have this different color. Uh, I just put color change background, you know, just to kind of highlight whatever images I'm putting over here uh, and changing the opacity, you know, just to kind of blend it in, make it look, make it look cool. So you can see, you can still see the background image, but it kind of changes the color. That's the way I looked at it. So, but anyway, you know, uh, just like Photoshop, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just things are in different places and they recently did an update. They changed this, all these, um, different tools out here. They have been kind of condensed and I, I was trying to figure out how to move it, change it back, but, uh, I just haven't took, taken the time, but a lot of these different tools, it was actually sp expanded out. They weren't condensed like they are now. Uh, so you got to kind of go through and remember where thing where they kind of categorize stuff. Um, so that's when I would say bad thing about it, the, the update that they just did. Uh, but whatever, you can go in and add a bunch of scripts, though, as well. Um, like, for instance, uh, some of the, I don't know, layer design or uh, I forget what you call it. Like I said, I'm not no graphics design, you know, effects. That's what I was thinking about, effects. Uh, so you can go in and do, you know, different effects. And, you know, a lot of the stuff you can do in um, Photoshop, like selecting images or selecting different parts of the image to, you know, highlight something or whatever. But like I said, I'm not going to go too deep. I got a video on that as well. So guys, check that out if you want to. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. These are actually all the applications that I use uh, while creating my YouTube videos. Um, and I know I'm not the best at it. And, you know, it's a lot of people out here way better at me than than doing a lot of this stuff. But try to stay humble, you know what I'm saying? And and try to do the best I can with what I have. Uh, I mean, eventually I may start using Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere. Uh, on one of my other Windows computers, but for right now, this is working for me. Um, and I appreciate the support that people are giving me. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And of course, keep it techie.